is that story true about how you grabbed the water bottle as a when when you had heard that uh, Brana was was directing Thor? You went as to as your fake prop hammer and went up there and said, you know, think of me as Thor. Is that well, is that a true story? You know, in the, we live in a world that is ruled by the Marvel universe now, and and um, th there was a time when they'd made one film, That's right. and it was Iron Man, and uh, so we were all in. In, during the theatrical run of Ivanov in the West End, um, it was very exciting. We were just, as a company, we were very excited on behalf of, on his behalf, that he had managed to land this huge directing gig, which none of us knew about. And um, somebody told me, um, Gina McKee, who I had most of my scenes with, was playing his wife, and she told me that Ken had got this huge directing gig. And so as this, the Chekhovian doctor in that play, I had longer hair and a goatee and wire-rimmed spectacles and a pocket watch, and you know I looked like a very Slavic Russian doctor from the 19th century. I, as a joke, in the interval, I picked up this empty water cooler and ran up to Ken's dressing room and pretended to be swinging Thor's hammer. Um, <laughs> it's probably ill-advised, uh, <laughs> but I did it anyway. Um, and um, and then actually, that was when he said, "Well, actually, don't joke. There's a couple of good parts in there." Um, so, yeah, that's how it came about. Well, we're very lucky that you didn't get Thor and you got Loki because really, it, it, I think that the key to so much of whether it's it's Richard the Third or it's any sort of the the villain needs to be somebody that is playful and devious, and you find so many rich layers of nuance within Loki. What was the key to him for you to that character? Gosh, um, well, uh, Ken and I kind of used. Shakespearean villains as a touchstone. Um, it was a very, it read like quite a Shakespearean script and the journey of Thor actually was very similar to the journey of Prince Hal in the Henry IV and Henry V trilogy, um, which obviously he knew very well having played Hal in Henry V many times. And, and so Thor goes from a hot-headed, impetuous young prince into being a, um, into being worthy of, of his title. And similarly, um, we tried to think about the, um, the immaculate uh, and terrifying um, talent for improvisation that a character like Iago has. Um, someone who can think on his feet and manipulate every situation to his advantage. We talked about uh, Cassius in Julius Caesar, um, who is characterized as having a lean and hungry look. Um, we talked about the brothers in King Lear, um, Edmund and Edgar. Edgar being the favoured son of Gloucester and Edmund being the bastard son um, who is driven by some sort of uh, terrible uh, lack of self-esteem to, to take his father and his brother down. Um, so those seem to be interesting aspects to, to steal from Shakespeare, really. Um, and then... Um, I just have to remind myself I was playing the god of mischief, yeah, right. um, <laughs> which is a hell of a thing to be god of, actually. You know, <laughs> there's gods of war and thunder and justice, and, and this guy was the god of mischief, so I, I knew I had to have as much fun as possible. You know, the devil plays all the best tunes. Um, and uh, it became, that became a cocktail. And then weirdly, from those beginnings, he, he just emerged. Um, he emerged in costume fittings. He emerged as I dyed my hair black. And um, I read the first script and I thought there was a fascinating, in, inside this in extraordinary, lavish, um, visual effects, you know, action spectacular. There was a very simple human drama about a father and two sons. And it's one that, that, that Browner talked to us about to Anthony Hopkins and, and Chris Hemsworth and myself. It was a real. We really worked on that. Um, that inside, you know, rainbow bridges and journeys through space and time. That there was actually something people could latch onto that was human and real. It's amazing watching that scene back. By the way, I haven't seen that. So it seems like a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great yeah. things that that hold up about it, though, is that obviously the best uh, the best villains don't think of themselves as villains. I mentioned Richard III a couple of minutes ago. He thinks he's doing the right thing, yeah. you know. And in the Marvel universe as well, it's the same type of dynamic. Th to them, they're not the villain. They're the one who's just have a different point of view, and it's the one that everybody should listen to, right? But every villain is a hero in his own mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And I really latched onto that. You know, he's someone who's actually trying to do the right thing. He just makes bad choices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even in Avengers, he's still trying to make right. make the right, right choice. Right. Right. <laughs> Possible exception of taking over the world with yeah. his proto-fascistic <laughs> tendency. Um, but uh, yeah, I still, it's funny, I haven't played him for three years, but I still have a soft spot for him. I still kind of... Yeah, I was going to ask, if a lot of people who have, a lot of actors who have a, a connection to a character like that, sometimes when they come around again, you sort of think, oh, they, they almost think of him as if he's like another guy. Like, oh, that uh, that's nice, he's going to be coming around again. A, a nice guest uh, in the house is going to be Loki, he's going to be coming around. You kind of have that feeling that he's sort of like this other guy at this other point? Yeah, it's so odd because you never, it's so rare as an actor to have a chance to go back to a character. Um sometimes you, you know especially you create a character and you hope that he makes an impact or people find a connection people can recognize something in him that's entertaining or truthful and you never very rarely do you get a chance to go back and i've gone back to him a couple of times and uh it is odd it's like hello darkness my old friend <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah yeah we'll see man we'll see <laughs> nothing ends in the marvel universe so <laughs>